Hi, I'm here on moho.com. Uh, my name is Bruce Sword and I play in a band called The Pineapple Thief. We've got a new album out called Magnolia. I hope you like it and um, please, if you do, come to one of our shows um, because um, I just, the best part is to, to see you if you like it. So, thanks very much. I wanna take you with me What's wrong? What's wrong with Well, it was recorded over a long period of time, actually. I, um, a lot of it I still record in my studio at home. Uh, though, you know, the vocals, the guitars and things. But there, there are certain things that you need a good studio, you know, to pay good money to get. And that specifically, you need to record drums. You've got to spend, like, you get the best. And uh, so we went to a place in London for that called um, Snap Studios. Um, and we also recorded the strings there. Uh, in so it took between November and I think we finished. In fact, we finished recording it on a cruise ship in Ma near Miami because we did the cruise to the edge with uh, with Yes Curates and um, we I, we were actually doing some overdubs in our cabin, which was uh, very memorable. I remember waking up doing the t t t vocals, looking out over the ocean as we were. Uh, so that was in um, in June, I think. No, no, when was that? In April. May, April. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's how long it took. And then, um, and then the mixing stage took until uh, Ju June, I think. It was uh, late June. So uh, a long time, but it, it does. It, it takes time, unfortunately. I think that's the um, the kind of old school way of, re of, of, of recording an album. You, you get uh, a big budget, the label will stick you into a, a studio and the band will sit in a room and write an album. And I think that's very different to the way the process that we do, which is I write the songs and, um, and I demo them up in my studio and, uh, and it takes as long as it takes. Uh, so it's not a case of, I don't think I could ever um, be put. I've never tried it, but I don't think I could ever go into an environment, you know, like let's let's stick you in a in a studio in a monastery or at the bottom of the ocean or whatever on an island in the middle of the Pacific to, to see if you can get some different inspiration and write a song. I, the, the, it would just be really alien to me to do that. So no, the, it's always going to be in my studio that the the, the album will will be uh, created. I, and I think if you ask any artist it, who plays live, the, the challenge of getting the live energy onto a record is really, really tough. And um, that's why for this one, um, we, we, we had more money, so we could afford to do things that we couldn't do before. Um, we worked a lot better with the strings, um, but we also were able to pay someone to mix it, uh, a guy called Adam Noble. Um, so for the first time I didn't, wasn't involved with the mixing process and, um, um, and he was able to bring it to a level that we've never had before, you know, the, the, the energy and the, in the impact of the record is I'm really, really, really proud of. I wanted to connect with people quicker, you know, and that, and, um, and that meant maybe in previous years where I would have an idea that worked, I would probably extend it and let, let people get to know it on first listen for longer but this time I've, I'm chopping and keeping everything a lot more a lot tighter um, which means the songs are finished sooner you know they're shorter but on multiple listens there's so many layers that, that, um, that, you, that I'm hoping that people will discover on, um, on the more they hear it less horizontal mm, more, more vertical. vertical exactly exactly <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't do that consciously. Um, it's still got. It's still there. Um, but I think uh, I was probably taking what I learned and experimented, especially with someone who is missing, and just went. Still use that, but it's very much more a band sound. And I think maybe more guitars at the expense of maybe some of the electronics. But it's still a lot. There's still a lot in there, and you can discover it when you get on multiple listens. I think. Yeah, I, I mean, it was 
uh, we were we were in a position this time last year where our, the, our drummer was unable to commit to the to the band. Uh, you know, some it just his circumstances changed, and uh, so we were we we found ourselves in a position where we had no choice but to if if the band was to survive, we had to get a, a drummer in. And as we, as you know, we knew Dan from from Wisdom of Crowds and. Um, and he came in and played on some gigs that we would have cancelled because uh, the um, Keith was unable to commit to them, and uh, and uh, that was that. He, he, we got on really well, and um, and and he joined. So yeah, he's, he's brought a lot of fresh energy, energy to the band. Ever since I was a kid, I, I loved rock music with strings. You know, that, I think when I first heard the Alan Parsons project. And that was when I first fell in love with strings and the string arrangements, really creative arrangements. And it was all the walls where, for the first time, we had the money to get a string section. And it, the, the, I can't describe the feeling of seeing a string, an orchestral section playing your stuff. It was just like, uh, you know, like the, the, the amazingly humbling. Uh, experience but but one thing that I took from that is that I, le I learned how to work, work with a string section so this time round I was writing knowing that I could get these strings arranged um, but not only that that I knew Andrew Skeet the arranger and he knew me and I was able to just give him a blank canvas so for instance there's a song um, the song from me and also um, Seasons Past that the, the, the strings are really quite prominent in those songs but when I gave the songs to Adam there was nothing nothing on there I just said to him I've left this open for you to, put your, to do your arrangements and uh, that was one of the big things with this record is trusting people who are better than you to do to, do, to contribute to the record and I just so I just focused on the songwriting the performance and let Andrew do what he was good at and, so yeah so I think with this record the strings feel much more integral to the songs you know and uh, the song the song they don't feel like oh I've just put strings on just because I can they're they're, they're, they're there because they they have to be there uh, yeah it's it's um, well I wrote the song so, so we didn't have the album title or the album cover but I had the song called Magnolia which was um, a song literally about the magnolia tree I have that signified um, you know this beautiful tree that would only flower very 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 uh, sort of brief moments in, in the spring and it would be one of the first plants to flower and it's beautiful and then before you know it this fleeting existence of the flowers are gone um, and it, it kind of became to symbolise for me that tree a lot, a lot of of the themes of that I sing about, which is love and loss, and you know, dealing with with, with things that life throws at you as you get older, and um, so yeah, that's when I that's why I wrote Magnolia because uh, at the time there was a girl by this magnolia tree with a broken heart. Literally, she was crying with this beautiful um, blossom, and it was such an intense scene that I couldn't I couldn't put it into words, but I could pick up a guitar and I could put it into music and uh, and so when we found um, so yeah so that that was that's that's why the, the album's called that and also the the cover um, informed the title as well because when we found the cover which is by a French artist called Patrick Gonzalez um, we knew it was perfect so it, it just all it all came together really. for concerning the, the cover um you discover the, the painting? Yeah, yeah, we didn't commission it. It was there. It was there already. So uh, um, we 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 uh, got in contact with Patrick and sent sent him some music, and he was happy to work with us. So it was, it was um, yeah, I'm really really pleased with it. It was an existing uh, work of art. Yeah, yeah. And where did you discover it? On a yeah, exhibition? online. Yeah, on uh, on a lit exhibition where he was um, online exhibition where he was selling selling his works, and that was a piece that hadn't been used, hadn't been sold. So we uh, got in contact to license it. No way, no way. I can genuinely say that when I did abducting the unicorn um, in 1999. 
it was a one-off in my mind it was uh, let's try it the, the label that I was on Cyclops were prepared to put it out I didn't have a name at the time um, and when it came out it did nothing you know uh, but then gradually people started to review it and then just enough people came to do another one and then that kind of process has, has ticked over for each album each album we've, we've, we've gained more fans and more fans and obviously as we change we're going to lose fans but we keep keep bringing new ones on to the point where we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I guess the lesson really is that you start from a low base and you keep you keep at it um, then eventually things will start to happen and we were big enough after Little Man to move to K-Scope and then K-Scope was a big jump for us and then but even then and every album we've done since then has, 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 has got us up to that level so um, that's that's really you know ten albums of 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 the good thing about starting at rock bottom is it's quite easy to do that. Whereas a lot of people I know I know some people who've had a first album that's just gone stratospheric when they were young, but have been doing that ever since. And um, I think in retrospect, I'd much rather be doing that. I can't. I can't describe it, it's, it's surreal. You know, the, the, when, I, when I picked up a guitar, the last thing I would have thought was that I'd be playing on a cruise ship in, in the Bay of Mexico. It was like, it was surreal. And uh, like I said, we were not only recording the final bits of Magnolia on, on, on the ship, but we were then, then taking our guitars onto the top of the deck and playing overlooking the, the open sea. And, uh, and also playing with, you know, childhood heroes of mine, you know, Yes, Yes, were there, Marillion were there, um, and the crowd was fantastic. So I was very, very pleased, and um, and I think it's um, opened our eyes to the fact that we've got fans all over the world, and you you forget that, and um, and um, especially in places like Mexico, you know, Mexico City, there were lots and lots of Mexican fans, and and I think from the gigs we did at on Cruise the Edge, we're now going to go over to Mexico in 2015 to. To do some shows, so so yes, yeah, it's, it's it's exciting time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we got a, sh a, a short 15-day tour in November. So we're, we're doing a gig in Paris um, on the 25th of November in the Divan du Monde, which I, where we played with Castonia for their unplugged. So uh, really great to be going there. Um, I can't wait to play to the French audience again. Um, I think there'll be some surprises in the set, especially especially, especially for the French people. Um, and then I think the natural progression now is um, obviously look at doing another Wisdom of Crowds record. Um, there will be another Plan of Thief record. What it's going to sound like, I do not know. And you know, I'm quite keen to do. Um, uh, a completely different kind of album because now the Pineapple Thief has become more of a band entity with shorter songs I'm quite keen to go and do a solo album as well but when that will happen and whether it will ever be released I don't know